So in this first section, we'll be talking about tick morbidity, or the kind of problems that people have with ticks. I've heard many things over the years, uh, such as people feeling like they're on stage during all their waking hours, that people are constantly watching them, waiting for their next tick to happen. Now one thing that happens with children in the office frequently is the child will come in, they may not have any ticks when they're sitting in front of me, or at least until I start talking to them about ticks, I'll say something like, you know, I, I see ticks very commonly in the office, I'll maybe even show them some of the ticks that I have, and children will let their guard down a little bit, and then I'll be able to see their ticks. Now this causes a couple problems. One of the problems is that when a family goes into the pediatrician's office and they say, you know, I'm very worried about my child's ticks, he's ticking constantly, uh, he's being bullied at school, he feels self-conscious of it, maybe a girl who cries and doesn't want to go to school, but in the office the child doesn't have any ticks. It brings up one of the characteristics of ticks that we'll talk about is that ticks tend to be suppressible, uh, but one of the things is that children are very self-conscious of them and they'll often suppress their ticks, especially in a doctor's office. There's three areas that I like to talk to families about in talking about how severe their, their tics are. The first is if there's any social difficulties. I'll talk about things like being teased and bullied or being very self-conscious, maybe not wanting to go to school or sports activities. A second area that I'll talk to families about is what's called functional impairments. And that's where the tics are causing problems. For example, a child who has an eye blinking tic, a very common uh, sort of tic, when they sit down to do their homework and reading out of, out of a book, if they're having very frequent eye blinking ticks, as they're reading, every tick that they have uh, may cause a little reset. They may have to restart a sentence over. Um, it takes a second or two to reorient themselves on, on the page of, 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 their, of their homework. And so those are the functional problems of ticks. Some other things of uh, functional problems could be if there's uh, unusual hand movements, maybe when a child's up to bat at baseball or trying to ride their bike, if they have a hand tick, uh, could cause some problems with extracurricular sports activities. And then a third area is if there's any physical discomfort. So you can imagine if a child has a very strong mouth opening tick or shoulder shrugging tick, uh, that after a while they could get sore muscles in those areas or even a sore jaw if they have a very strong mouth opening tick. So in the next section we'll be talking about the different sorts of ticks, motor ticks and vocal ticks.